This is a Jacob Lipke Studios production. Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm not going to be doing a let's play, but more of a how-to on one of my favorite games that I've been playing a lot recently called Trade Wars 2002. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is download this application Sync Term. I'll put a link in the description of where you would go get it. But you download the same app on Mac as you would on PC. It's the same method as well. Um, and it will look exactly the same, too. It'll look like an old computer, basically. That's what this whole thing is. And I actually have to use the arrow keys to control all of this. But once you pull this up, your directory here that I'm going up and down will be empty. So to add it, you're going to want to press Control D or sorry, Option D, or no, it is Control D. There we go. I just did something else for some reason. Um, once you hit Control D, it'll pull up Address. And so where I like to play Trade Wars is on the Cave BBS because other places where I've played it, you don't get nearly as many turns. Like in this one, you get 9,999 turns per day. In the other one, I think I got like only like a thousand or something. It's like way less. It's not even. Can't, it's not nearly as fun. I don't know why anybody would play it on that. Well, the only reason why I would is because it's actually a local BBS that's in Hillsboro, Oregon. It's pretty. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's probably pretty close to where I live. So I think that's kind of cool. But that that version of Trade Wars sucks. So I don't play it on there. I just have an account. And so we'll we'll type in the address here. I don't really need to do that because I have it saved in my directory and you'll be able to as well once you're done with uh, your session, the first session. .net and now it's going to connect to the server and so it's actually very important once you're logging in, because I'm not going to go all the way over how to log in and whatnot, but something that you have to pay attention to is when you do make your account, you gotta remember your user number. Your username actually doesn't matter at all. It says here, enter username or number, but no, you don't even need to enter your username. You literally just can enter this number here and it, it doesn't it doesn't even ask for your, your, uh, your uh, name. I, I, I don't know, I think you can do like the name and the number together, but I don't know why you just wouldn't do the number, right? So just make sure while you're, you know, when you first log in, you remember that number, that it will assign you a number. And it should, on this, it should be a four digit number, so you'll be able to find it easily. It's just the first couple times I actually used BBS, I didn't realize that you need the number and that you can't just use your username. And so, you gotta be careful about that. Here we are. Um, as you can see, I was on here like, couple minutes ago because I was actually setting up my Trade Wars account so that I am not just starting off on my main planet because I don't want to expose the location of my main planet. I mean, I don't really know. I, I'm sure that whoever I'm at war with in the game would not come across the video and see it. But in case they do, I don't want to give away my position. So I actually just created a new planet. Um, I actually did it yesterday when I was uh, you know, trying to record this, but then the photon missile exploded. So, it should just start it off, start us off right there. And we'll look at the log, because actually today's log was actually kind of interesting. Well, the first thing was that it shows what happened the other day. It actually happened technically within today's round. Um, so it does show up st here still. Jacob was attacked by evil corpse fighters, which by the way, I went back and destroyed all of their fighters because of that. I was so mad at them. Anyway, so here you can actually see people like taunting each other. Get a life, hacks aware. That's the main bad guy in this for in this server of the game. He sucks. He's terrible. He's taken over like four of my planets. I hate that guy. Um, yeah, and everybody does. You know, all the good guys. Because you, you can either be a good guy in the game or you can be a bad guy in the game. And all the most powerful people, they're bad guys because they don't have to play by the rules, you know. There's certain things that you have to do if you want to be a good guy, okay? You know, and so I would suggest being a good guy because then you have the help of everyone else in the game, you know, or most other people, except for the bad guys, obviously. 
uh, yeah, so then you got other people taunting, you know. Oh, and, and this will happen too. If you if you leave uh, the screen just doing nothing for a while, it'll like it'll just automatically terminate your session. Oh, looks like there's some more here. None of it has to do with me though, so it's not really that important. It's going to ask if I want to clear sector avoids. You never really want to do that until you can actually go scan the sector. All right, so here we are at the planet that I created the other day, Rigel 7. <laughs> it's based on Kang and Kodos' planet. And I have a planet scanner, so when I attempt to land on a planet like this, this whole screen, this yellow thing will come up here. It'll tell me the name of the planet that it is and all of its defenses and, and stuff. So that that's just if I have a planet scanner, but you don't start off with a planet scanner. So yours will just go directly to the planet once you press land. But for me, I have to you know actually manually enter in the number planet that I want to land on. And so there's a couple things that you want to pay attention to right when you start the game. And something that is important to know is how to deal with your cargo holds and basically what is in your cargo holds and what is not in your cargo holds. So when you start off the game, you're typically going to have a bunch of colonists on your ship just automatically, not on the planet, on the ship. All right. So what you have to do is you have to unload the colonists from the ship to the planet. And I didn't really realize that at first because it says you have zero free cargo holds at first when you haven't done this, you know. And so then I look at my cargo over here, you know, this is the, what displays the cargo on your ship. It says zero, everything's zero, you know. So I was like, oh, what's going on? So I tried unloading fighters here. This is the fighters on your ship. I tried unloading those and, and it didn't do anything, you know. And so then I realized finally that there's this number that doesn't even show up on here. Um, that is colonists on your ship, but they are stored in the cargo holds. So, I mean, it could be easily fixed by just putting another number right here on ship amount. This is colonists, and it's also... Because it's they're all, all of this is in the same amount of cargo holds. You can hold up to 150, my ship at least, can hold up to 150 divided into these three things, you know? So if you just had another one right here that showed colonists it would just you, I wouldn't even have to explain all this but because they don't do that I have to because it's actually quite confusing like if you know you have to I took me a while to figure it out and I was actually quite pissed while I was doing that um, but anyways so that's just kind of an important pointer but the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get more colonists because you need to level up your planet that's kind of like the first Eh, I get not, not necessarily the first thing that you'd want to do, but it's something that you want to do early on so you can, you know, start leveling up and, and then you can get to a high enough level within a decent amount of time, which which I made that mistake as well. And that's why I'm making this video, so that you can kind of avoid the mistakes that I made while playing this game, uh, which made it not quite as fun at first, but if you play it like this, it'll be totally fun at first, you know. So, let's uh, go to the planet that you're going to be able to get colonists from, and that's always planet number one. Now, from what I've kind of figured out from playing other games of Trade Wars, that this seems to be pretty universal. Uh, sector number one always contains a planet that has colonists that are ready to go. Now, depending on, you know, who's gone there that day or how many times they have, like, there will be different amounts of colonists on the planet. Like, there might be none here when we go there. I mean, or like hardly any. So, we'll land on the planet. That's planet number one. And it looks like there's 7,370 colonists ready to leave Terra, which is the name of this planet on in Sector 1. So you're going to want to press T, take colonists, and it'll ask how many you want to take. It will, if you have zero, or if you have all your holds are empty, um, you can just press enter, and it will just automatically fill all of your holds. And it says the colonists file aboard your ship, eager to head out to New Frontiers. That's super cool. Um, you return to your ship and leave the planet. So it will automatically blasts off from the planet. So now we're going to go back to the planet that I made the other day, 375. And we'll warp over there. Hopefully we can run into some bad guys on the way and I can blow them up. Mm. Nope, no bad guys. But I might be able to find some later. Anyway, so we're going to land on the... Finding bad guy. Whoa, I just activated a different menu. 
that he didn't want to do. Um, attacking bad guys is not necessarily something that he that I need to explain because it'll like it'll walk you through how to do that, um, so you don't have to really worry about that. But now that we have colonists in our filled in our cargo holds, it now says you have zero free cargo holds. So this is how the game actually might just start out for you. And so notice here, there's zero things filled in the uh, as in cargo worth of stuff. But there's uh, tons of colonists. So what you have to do if you have zero free cargo holds and none of these show a number, then you have to press S because S is how you load and unload colonists. And so then it'll ask if you want to display the planet. I always do, no matter what, you know. And then it'll ask, leave or take colonists. And you want to leave them. And you can actually choose if you want to split them up. Like you could do, like since I have 150 holds, it doesn't say that anywhere, but I have 150 holds worth of uh, colonists. So I can split it up 50, 50, 50, you know. But uh, I think I'm just going to do uh, one fuel ore because that is just, you know, it's what's going to be efficient on this planet. Um, equipment is harder to make on this planet, and, and I already have planets for organics. So we'll do, we'll do um, fuel ore, and um, it all depends on the kind of planet you have. This is a mountainous class planet, so... Uh, like I said, equipment is not made as efficiently. So, but you can just read uh, what the what each planet is like by doing C, activating your computer, and then anytime you need to see any kind of menu, and it, it, you'll be able to figure this out easily. You just press the question mark, which says question mark equals help. See, so when we press the question mark, it pulls up all this stuff here, and so we can actually view the ship catalog. We can view the daily log. We can also view stuff like planetary specs, and so you can read that and figure out based on the planet that you get what you sh how you should populate your planet. So just just read that. That's something good to know. And so I think the next thing that would be important to say about this game would be how you make money. Now. I like to be a um, trader or a merchant or whatever, and so what I like to do to make money is I transport goods. And so where I like to go to do that is we'll press quit and quit the computer, and we'll move from this sector in 375, we'll move over to sector 7. Because in this game, at least, this is where this is how I used to make a lot of money. I actually I have a lot of money now, so I don't really need to make money as much as I used to. And as you can see, we're going to go through two uncharted sectors. So hopefully we can run into some bad guys there and we can blow them up. Let's see. Oh, it's unexplored. And actually, it's an unexplored port. So let's stop here. Yes, we're going to stop. And then we're going to port and trade so that hopefully I can get some experience. Yep. So that's another thing that's good to know. When you port and trade at what's known as a neglected port or just a port that hasn't been docked to for a while, you'll get any certain amount of experience points based on how long it's been since uh, a ship has docked there. And so you can get up to 50 experience points. So this is, this is great. I got as many experience points as I could from going to this uh, port. Or any port. So now we'll we'll keep going towards seven. So we can just press seven again, and as you can see, it'll take us through uncharted territory. But there was nothing there that time. All right. So we'll port and trade. And I actually have zero credits. <laughs> I didn't even realize. So I gotta go get some credits. But that's not a big deal. So it's good that I forgot to get credits because that leads me to go to the next thing that I should show you guys, which is the Star Dock. Now the Star Dock. And this game is in 4382. And so we'll warp over there. And now when we press P for port, it'll give us options of land on the star dock or trade at this port. And you can, all, you can always attack the port too, but that will make you become a bad guy. So I suggest you don't attack any ports. So we're going to press S to land on the Star Dock, and, and this is really cool. As you can see, there's a picture here of the Star Dock itself, and it says, This has to be the single largest man-made object you've ever seen. It contains 
on or it continues on for miles and contains the factories for all of the major brands of space going craft. Since the materials wars of 1998 on Earth, all shipbuilders have re all shipbuilders relocated here. You've heard many strange stories about the people and places here, but you haven't found many of either yet. All right. So, and oh, this is also something good to show you guys. As you can see, a port official runs up to you as you dock and informs you that the sensors have detected a limpet tracking mine somewhere on my ship. Do I want to uh, remove it? Well, yes, I do, but I don't have any credits. So first I have to say no, and I'll press G for Galactic Bank. We'll withdraw. Um, we'll withdraw more than 5,000 because that's how much it takes to, to remove the mine. But we need to buy some, uh, we need to also buy some um, materials so I can show you guys how to trade. So we'll just withdraw like what? We'll withdraw 6,000. We'll do 6,000. There we go. All right. And now you can just quit. And now we'll go, we'll actually quit the star dock in gen, we'll quit the entire star dock. And then we have to actually go back so that it'll once again ask us if we want it removed. And this time we'll say yes. So now they say after intensive search, they find and remove the limpet tracking mine. Unfortunately, they can't tell who it belonged to. They never can. I don't know why it says that. It's kind of annoying because it makes you think that like sometimes they will be able to find out who it is, you know, that, that left the mine. But that, no, no, it just tells you that, you know. Anyway, so now we'll go back to sector seven. All right, port and trade. And it asks how many units of fuel ore we want to buy. And so, you know, it doesn't really matter right now how many I, you know, transport, because you'll, you'll be able to see regardless of how many I buy that you can make money by doing this. But so we'll, we'll just start with 44 here. As you can see, 44 units of fuel ore, that's going to be 703 credits. So uh, let's, you can actually bargain them down. So let's do, let's do 680. How about that? Will he take it? Yep, he did. And so because I was able to talk him down, it actually gave me one experience point. That, that's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, we don't need any of the other stuff because I don't, the yeah, organics are hard to get rid of. Um, not many places want to buy those. So now we'll move. We literally just have to move over one sector to sector six port and trade here and it'll ask us how many units of fuel ore we want to sell. We'll sell 44 and as you can see we just turned our what around $700 investment into $2,169 but we could even get more. Let's try for 2200 and he takes it. So yeah we, we just uh, turned you know just under $700 $680 into uh, Two thousand two hundred two or twenty two hundred dollars, and so that is how you trade in trade wars. That's how you make your money. So let me think. What are some other things that I should go over before I go to my main base and show you guys that? Now I have to actually doctor it a little bit once I go to my main base because, like I said, I don't want to expose where I'm at. So I'm going to have to block out the sector number with uh, some sort of editing software. But uh, for now, I think that's all you really need to know to get you started on Trade Wars. Everything else is pretty much self-explanatory, you know, but, but with that information, you'll be able to start the game and, and start playing it and have a good time right away without having to you know, go through all the confusing things like I did. So, yeah. And just another tip, if you can't find the Star Dock in the, the you know game that you're playing, if you're playing a different version of the game, you should be able to bring up your nav point computers, your, your nav points computer, and it should uh, have that saved automatically as a place where you can go to that star dock, the place where I had my bank and whatnot. And also, if you need to buy a new ship, let's say your ship gets blown up, that's where you're going to go to buy a new ship, is at the shipyards at the star dock. If you also want to place a bounty on somebody, which I've done uh, as well, you could go to the the, fed, the federal police uh, 
station at, at the Stardock. You can also watch movies, and you can buy other you know materials at the hardware store like missiles, tracking mines, um, regular mines. Oh, and by the way, those tracking mines, you don't have to worry about if you got hit by one of those and then you accidentally went back to your base because as long as you remove it before the person who you know released that tracking mine is back on their when they're playing again as long as you remove it before then they can't see where you where you went with it you know it's only where you currently are or where the tracking mine currently is until it's removed and then it doesn't say anything you know and so yeah those are the ins and outs of trade wars 2002 okay so here is my planet and I actually was able to get the sector and planet number off screen so that I'm not exposing my position. But as you can see here, there's a lot of different stuff than just a regular planet that you start out with. You know, first of all, it says here that the planet has a level three citadel and that the treasure treasury contains fifty seven million dollars <laughs> credits, I should say. And it also shows our military reaction level, which means that 30% of these uh, 400,000 400, or, yeah, 400,000 fighters will come attack somebody who tries to invade the planet. Then it says Q cannon power level is at 12%. Now, that means that 12% of the whole potential amount of power. Now, if I had like 100,000 units of fuel ore, because that's what the cannon is powered by, is the fuel ore. If I had 100,000 uh, units, then I would be able to use 100% of the cannon's power. And then this atmosphere level and sector level just means this is the amount of fuel ore that will be used per blast on the atmosphere and then on the sector. So there will be none that will defend the sector if somebody comes into the sector. But if somebody comes into the <sighs> hate this when that's out. Anyways, when somebody comes into the sector, um, then it will fire 25% power uh, or 25% of that fuel ore's worth of power at them. Now, hold on a second. I need to get <laughs> back to the game and then actually, I'm going to cut for a second like I did uh, earlier because I accidentally revealed uh, another uh, giveaway position thing. But, but. Uh, now I'm going to cut again so that I can get back to a way that it won't you won't be able to see the position. <laughs> okay, so we're back again. And by the way, I said earlier how if you don't use the screen for long, if you don't punch in a number for long enough, then the screen will like just get out of the, the game and it will go back to the, the main screen of the BBS. And so that's pretty annoying, you know, but... Uh, now, I'll go to the Citadel, and I'll actually be able to show you guys how you would navigate through your Citadel um, once you build one. So, um, it's actually asked me if I want to uh, take or leave product, because that's, that's actually how I was able to get this off screen. Uh, we're going to leave product, because there's no product to leave. But now, um, it'll want to get to your Citadel, it'll ask for a planet command, and we'll press C. And then there we go. It takes us to our Citadel. And actually, there's a picture of the Citadel, which is pretty sweet. I think that's cool. There, there, uh, although this is a text-based game, there's tons of pictures and even some animation in the game, which is really cool. And so here we'll go and we'll do the question mark because that will display all of our Citadel options. And so here you see transporter control. I actually don't have that set up. Engage ship's computer. That just turns on the ship's computer while you're in the citadel. Display traders here. These are other traders that are in your citadel, which, which I don't have any right now. Ex exchange trader ships. You can exchange ships with people. Shield generator control. Now, this is the next big upgrade that I need to get is a shield generator for my planet here. And uh, once I get that, it'll be super sweet. Uh, personal information, that's just uh, like the, the same I command when you're in, a, in space, in a sector. The same thing will happen. It'll give up and you know, pull up your pers personal information. Uh, this is how you would change the settings of the Quasar Cannon that I showed you guys earlier. In fact, I'm going to press question mark again so that it doesn't log me off like last time. Um, military reaction level, that was what I told you guys about too. The thing that I said at 30%. 30% of the fighters will come react to somebody trying to land on the planet. 
interdirector control, interdictor, or yeah, interdictor. Yeah, I don't even know what that means, and I don't know what that does either. But it is clearly not very important because I've never used it. Uh, planetary transwarp. I think that means you can like warp the planet into different places, which is weird. I'm not sure. Once again, this is another upgrade that I haven't gotten to yet, so so I'm not really sure. Uh, this is an important one. Remain here overnight. You, if you do that, you can just uh, you know leave without having to stay in space as you normally would. Like if even if you have your own planet, you can't just stay on the planet unless you have a citadel like this. So that's uh, that's why you want to build a level one citadel as soon as possible. Oh, see, it's uh, telling me I got to be active. So we'll do that again. Uh, treasury fund transfers, that's how I take all of these credits uh, out of the treasury or into the, put more into the treasury. Um, upgrade citadel, that's how you would you know upgrade your citadel once you have enough resources. So I actually have one upgrading. Th this one right here is upgrading in the process, and so I can't really see what the next upgrade would require. Um, but it'll tell you how much you need for each one. It's easy to figure out. Um, and then this is how you get rid of traders uh, that you don't want in your citadel. And then the, the corporation menu is actually the same for the corporation menu in, once again, for the ship's computer. Um, that you also don't need to worry about the corporation yet. That you'll, you'll be able to figure that out on your own later, but it's not very important. So I, I won't explain corporations and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that, that's how you play Trade Wars 2002, and, and then he, this is uh, my current setup with Trade Wars 2002, without me having to show my current location. And so I actually, I've actually built up a pretty good planet. In fact, I have so many ships on this planet, and my Quasar Cannon is active, that I don't think that uh, Haxaware would even attempt to try to take over this planet, because he can't even carry nearly the amount of ships that he would need to take over the planet. Like, I have, like, probably ten times the amount of ships on my planet than he could even carry in general, you know. So, yep, this planet's pretty much safe, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I do not want to give away its position. But, like I said, I was able to figure out a way to do both. Not give away my position, but show you guys my awesome planet. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.